Liquid coagulants are stored in chemical storage tanks and fed into the flow stream by chemical feed pumps or pumps. A positive displacement pump is used for this purpose because precise metering is required when dosing water treatment chemicals. So the pumps used for dosing coagulants are often called metering pumps and there's several types that we'll look at. The chemical feed pump may be manually set or controlled automatically by SCADA. So here you can see that we have our concentrated chemicals stored in the chemical storage tank. And then we also have a plastic day tank, which is where the chemical is mixed with water so it's ready to be metered in. There's a transfer pump that transfers the concentrated chemical into the day tank and the water supply will it is used to dilute that chemical to the required concentration. You also have a gauge uh, that tells you your level and then you have the metering pump that meters the coagulant through the flash mixing process so that coagulation can occur just prior to the flocculation process. Now one type of chemical feed pump is the diaphragm pump and here uh, you have a drive motor, you have external adjustments and gearing that are used to adjust the length of stroke, and then you have a diaphragm that varies the volume within the chamber. And as that diaphragm moves back and forth uh, because of this piston, let's get that piston moving, as that piston moves, it moves this diaphragm and varies the volume so that the ball check valves will open and close sequentially so that it's constantly sucking in chemical and discharging chemical with every stroke. So this is a positive displacement diaphragm type metering pump. And here you can see the check valves, I've, uh, they're just ball checks that will open and close with each uh, piston stroke a peristaltic pump and a peristaltic pump basically just it takes rollers and moves it on this plastic tubing and you can see the blue representing the chemical that is drawn in and then forced out due to these rollers rolling on the plastic tubing. This is a very inexpensive type of pump that's very effective and very accurate but the downside of a peristaltic pump is that these flexible uh, tubes have to regularly be replaced. So there's a little higher maintenance on a peristaltic pump than you have with the diaphragm pump. Well, when you add the coagulant, it's very important that it be mixed very well so that it becomes homogeneously mixed within the solution. And we call this rapid mixing or flash mixing. And it's required when the coagulants are added to the raw water. Now the flash mixing or the rapid mixing process takes less than 60 seconds to complete. So some numbers you're going to want to remember is coagulation takes place in one to two seconds. Rapid mixing or flash mixing happens in less than a minute, so less than 60 seconds. And there's four commonly used mixing mechanisms for rapid mixing. You have mechanical mixers, you have static mixers, you have pumps and conduits, and you have baffled chambers. Well the mechanical mixers consist of a motor driven shaft that turns a propeller or propellers um, or an impeller or even a turbine to provide mixing energy to the chemical and raw water. And they're placed either in a small chamber where the coagulant is added to the raw water or they're installed directly into a pipeline and those are called inline mixers. Now mechanical mixers are used because they're very easy to control and that's something you'll want to remember. Mechanical mixers, uh, it's, they're easy to control the mixing energy and that's why they're commonly used. Well here we have a single blade mechanical mixer. And as we feed coagulant in, we'll get the coagulant going, it basically feeds right into this propeller and gets mixed with the water. 
so we can see that the coagulant gets fed right at the point of mixing so that it becomes homogeneously mixed and then the coagulation can take place. Another type is the multi-blade mechanical mixer, which is the same principle as the single blade, it's just there's multiple blades. So as we add the coagulant, you have uh, perhaps more violent mixing. And again, thorough mixing is very important to the coagulation and flocculation process. If you have inadequate flash mixing, you're going to have poor coagulation and flocculation. Next type we'll look at is the mechanical uh, inline mixer. Has the same components except this is directly in the pipeline. So the coagulant gets added right at the point of mixing and it mixes the coagulant with the raw water. The next, uh, rapid mix facility is the static mixer. And here the static mixer creates turbulence by its design. And you can see by the picture here that it creates turbulence by this element that's placed in the pipeline. The coagulants uh, mix due to this turbulence. And it's very inexpensive and simple to install because there's no moving parts. Uh, the downside is it creates high head loss. And another negative to static mixers is that the mixing energy depends on plant flow. So as flow increases, the mixing energy increases, so mixing is better. When plant flow is low, you don't get very much mixing energy, therefore the coagulation and flocculation process can suffer. So although they're very simple to install and very inexpensive to install, they have these negatives of creating high head loss and the ener mixing energy is dependent upon plant. So here you can see the chemical just gets added just before this element and it causes the turbulence which causes the coagulant to mix with the raw water and it does create head loss issues. Mixer is a the diffuser type mixer and basically that's just where the coagulant is diffused through holes in pipes through the flow channel. So it just diffuses the coagulant throughout the flow channel. Next are our pumps and conduits. Uh, if the coagulant is added to the section of a pump, the pump turbulence will cause it to be rapidly mixed uh, into the solution and the pump speed determines the mixing energy. Now the downside of this type of system is that the coagulants may corrode the pump internals which would cause premature failure. And the way this works basically is a, a coagulant is just added just prior to a low lift pump and the turbulence through that pump causes it to mix and then it goes into the flocculation basin. Well a variation of this pump and conduit type uh, you have a pump that takes a suction off of the raw water supply line and the coagulant gets added uh, to the discharge of that pump and then it gets sent back through a diffuser into the raw water channel line and there's uh, turbulence created there at the discharge uh, that uh, causes the mixing to happen. This is called a pumped blender. So this is just a different style of pump and conduit rapid mix facility and it's called the pumped blender. A simple design are baffled chambers Baffled chambers create turbulence by redirecting the flow stream over and under a series of baffles. The negative to this type of system is that the mixing energy is determined by plant flow rate and can't be adjusted. And here's how it works. Water comes in, the chemical feed goes in, and it just goes through a series of baffles where it's redirected, and that causes the turbulence so that it's mixed. And those are the different rapid mix or flash mix facilities that are used in water treatment.